The first thing you will need to do when bleeding your brakes is jack up the car and remove all four wheels. For additional assistance with that task, please follow the link provided at the end of this video. Before you begin, you will want to clean around the top of the reservoir indicated by the red arrow. You do not want any dirt or debris getting into the brake fluid or the system. Remove the cap with the level sensor and gasket, red arrow. Inspect the gasket for wear as it helps seal the system and replace it as needed. Set the cap off to the side where it cannot get dirty. Next, fill the motive power bleeder with two quarts of brake fluid if you are flushing the system. Make sure that you check with your owner's manual and use the correct brake fluid. It is wise to start out with two quarts of brake fluid in the pressure bleeder and have another quart on the shelf in reserve. Depending on your car and the mistakes you may make, you may go through a lot of fluid, especially if this is the first time you're doing a brake bleed. Also, only use new brake fluid from a sealed can. Brake fluid is hydroscopic, meaning that it attracts water and water vapor, which diminishes its performance. Brake fluid containers left exposed to air will have the fluid inside compromised after a short period of time. Attach the bleeder to the top of the reservoir, making sure it is tight. You do not want to have any leaks when you are pressurizing the system. Place the lid on the bleeder and use the hand pump on top to pressure the system to around 15 pounds. There is a scale on the front of the bleeder that shows the pressure, yellow arrow. If you are flushing or bleeding the system, you will want to start on the brake furthest from the reservoir, which is the right rear. The bleed nipples on the calipers are always on top. If your bleed nipple is on the bottom, someone has installed your caliper upside down and it will be impossible to bleed. The front calipers on the 951 have two bleed nipples on each caliper. Red arrows, one for each side. Start with the inside one. Remove the protective cap on the nipple, green arrow. The nipples see a lot of weather and road grime over the years, yellow arrows. So you always want to use a flared nut wrench when working with them, red arrow. The flared nut wrench will grasp four sides of the nipple and help prevent stripping. Attach a clear plastic hose to the nipple and have a catch bottle handy. You want to use a clear hose so that you can see the bubbles in the fluid. With the system pressurized, open the bleed screw or nipple and watch the fluid flow into the catch bottle, red arrow. When you can see clean fluid coming out and there are no longer air bubbles in it, close off the nipple and move to the next one. Remember to check the fluid level in your bleeder. You do not want it to run dry and start pumping air into the system. The pedal should now feel pretty stiff. If the pedal still feels spongy, you may need a new master cylinder, have a leaking caliper, or have old spongy flexible brake lines. You should flush and replace your brake fluid every two years. Deposits and debris can build up in the lines over time and decrease the efficiency of your brakes. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.